Hi, this is Gary and welcome to the propagation attack section. In this section, we are going to talk about how you can exploit other system. In this section, we are going to talk about how you can move around the network after you compromise the first computer. First, let's start with pivoting. So pivoting is a process to access computers on the network, which is not reachable from your own machine, but it is reachable through an already compromised computer. For instance, in our case, the Kali machine can directly attack the Windows 10 machine, but not the Windows 16 machine, because that is in a separate network, which is the evil corporate network. However, the Windows 10 machine is dual homed, which means that it has access to both networks with two network interfaces. So after we compromise the Windows 10 machine, we can theoretically start attacking the Windows 16 machine. And in this lecture, I will show you how this can be done in a practical manner. We will try two techniques, the Metasploit pivoting and using the SOX proxy. So as you can see here, basically using the Windows 10 machine, we would like to build some kind of tunnel that will help us reach the Windows 16 machine. So first about Metasploit pivoting. It's a feature built into Metasploit and Metaperter. You can set up a routing through Metaperter, which can be used with Metasploit exploits and tools. It is pretty cool and easy to use, but it only works inside Metasploit. So let's see and get back to our Metaperter session. As you can see, it's running, and I have uh, system rights. Here, I can issue an ifconfig to see the network interfaces. And as you can see, these are the two interfaces we are interested in. This is what we were connecting to so far. And this is the other interface that points to the internal network. So we'd like to build routing from this network to this network. Now let's put Metaperter in the background. And next I will use a module called outer root, which is post multi manage outer root. So using this module, we can route traffic through Metaperter and we can build a routing table so that Metaperter knows how to route the traffic based on the IP address. I feel that configuring outer route through this module is a little bit weird. In the past, you could do it from Metaperter, but it's deprecated now, so this is the current way to do so. So if we just list the options, then you can see that you can define a command, and here are the list of commands that you want to do, and then you need to define the session, which is going to be the session ID of the Metaperter session you want to use for routing. And of course, you can define a subnet and net mask what you want to route. First, let's set the command to print, cmd print, and the session to our current Metaperter session. All right, so exploit. As you can see, it says there are currently no routes defined. So there is no routing table yet, but that's what we want to do right now. So you can either set the routing table manually by adding new routes and defining the subnet and the net mask for each route, or you can just try to use the auto add command of this module and hope that Metasploit will figure out the routes uh, for itself. So let's try that first and, and hopefully we'll save some time. So set cmd to add, and the rest should be fine. Yes, and run exploit. All right, so it's two subnets were discovered and added to the routing table. So I will set the command again to print and just list it. And you can see that whenever a request comes in to this network or to this network, then it will go through session one. Actually, routing to this network is not necessary because we already have connection to this network, but we don't have direct connection to this network, so that's necessary to go through to session one. All right, so first let's try whether it actually works. I will use a module just to try it, and for that I will use an auxiliary module
change the SMB enum shares to enumerate shares on the uh, Windows 2016 machine. All right, so I will set the R host 10.0 to 15. Of course, now we know the address of the Windows 2016 machine, but at this point, first you would also scan that network to find out which hosts are alive, etc. I will show you in a second how you can do that. Just I wanted to make sure that this routing uh, works. All right, and we can run the exploit. And as you can see, it didn't give us too much information because authentication was requested, but it does tell us that it's a Windows 16 machine, which proves us that our routing works. So we could connect from our Kali machine to the Windows 16 machine through the routing running on the Windows 10 machine. So that's awesome. So with this configuration, you can basically use any Metaspot module to attack the backend network, so the Evil Corp network. However, this is our limitation as well, that we can only use Metasploit modules and Metapreter to do our attacks. So we cannot use any other tools outside of Metasploit. So let's see how we could do that. And for that, we are going to use a SOX proxy. So SOX is a proxy protocol that allows programs to connect to other computers through a proxy. In our case, the proxy runs on the Windows 10 machine through Metapreter. Through the proxy, we can connect to the Windows 16 machine as well. So let's see how. First off, we need the routing setup, uh, how we just did it. So, so we need the Metasploit auto route module already set up. So that's fine. Second, we are going to be using the SOX for a Metasploit module to create the SOX proxy. So I can just search for SOX. And as you can see, it supports 4A and the SOX 5 protocols. The difference is that SOX5 also supports uh, authorization, uh, but we don't want to use that right now. So I will just use the SOX4A. And let's show the options. And as you can see, we could already start it with this configuration, but I will change the server host to just limit it to the IP address of this machine. Again, this is not localhost, so you could even use it by other machines in this same network. And so show options. And as you can see, it's already set to listen 0000, which means all interfaces and on port 1080. So if we start it this way, then the proxy will listen on all interfaces and on this TCP port. So that should be fine. You could limit the IP address to something else, but it's not necessary. It should be able to work this way. So let's try. Deploy it. And it says that it started as a background job, so you can confirm it with jobs. There it is. And we can also confirm with netstat whether it's really recent listening. T. Let's grab port, port number, and it does. So basically, a SOX proxy is listening on this machine, which will route traffic through the interpreter. As always with proxies, you have to make sure that all traffic goes through the proxy, so it's not going to happen automatically. And of course, some tools can deal with proxies, but some tools cannot. For that, we will use another tool called proxy chains. Proxy chains was created to be able to create a tunnel of proxies for tools that otherwise would not be able to work with proxies. With proxy chains, these tools can go through this tunnel and work as if there were no proxies there. So first, let's configure proxy chains. I will open a new tab and edit the etc proxychains.conf. And as you can see here, we can define a proxy list. 
and we also need a sock for proxy and since it's listening on all interfaces we can also use the local host so we just have proxy chains that whenever something comes in that there is a proxy listening on local host which is true because it our proxy listens on all interfaces and on port 1080 all right let's see when fit now when we use proxy chains it will know to send traffic to the metasploit proxy and then metasploit will know how to forward it because of the auto route plugin so now we can use normal tools to connect to the backend network because of the proxy chains but remember proxying traffic this way it's going to be much slower than uh, direct connections and some tools might not be able to work this way at all let's try for instance nmap so first you need to use proxy chains and then use the command you actually want to execute this will proxy chains will run the command and because of that the traffic will go through the SOX proxy then I will add some additional configuration to nmap to make sure that it works well with the proxy first we are going to use a connect scan which is also a TCP scan but it actually does a, a TCP uh, connect and uh, not just send a scene packet as the scene scan because the scene scan doesn't really work well with uh, with SOX proxies then I look for version and ping might not work either so I will tell that assume that all machines are running and I don't need DNS resolution and then the IP address which again I know exactly right now and because I just want to show you that it works I will only scan two ports because you will see that it's pretty slow so we cannot just scan all the 65,000 ports out there uh, through the proxy because it will going to be incredibly slow and I'm not even sure that nmap would survive but the scan was successful as you can see that it confirms that these ports are both open so nmap works through the proxy but you might need to configure nmap a little bit better to make sure that it actually goes through the proxy so you can see that through pivoting we cannot get the same connection quality as with a routed network as an alternative of course and this would be a third option you could configure the compromise machine as a router to route between these two networks but that's a pretty significant change on a machine so it might be detected by some kind of detection framework all right this was all about pivoting and so as you can see we could make the connection from the Kali machine to the Windows 2016 machine which was not possible before so we learned how to use the Metasploit outer route module to connect to the backend network and also how to use other tools through the SOX proxy uh, using the Metasploit SOX module